Welcome to the 2022 Maui County Candidate Interviews, a series where we ask important questions for those running for our county's Senate, state representatives, local county council, and mayor. Become an informed voter. Today we have interviewing Carol Lee Kamakona running for the Kahului County Council seat. First questions that we have are, first of all, Carol, <laughs> what inspired you to run for office? And what, what do you feel in terms of your background really supports you in this office that you're running for? Mahalo for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with Maui Pono Network. What inspired me to come? The lack of attention to our local residents. Too much offshore investment, too many offshore buyers for our homes is what makes it hard for our people. Too many of our people are leaving the islands. I see a lot of empty buildings, a lot of empty homes. Why can't they be housed for our homeless, our houseless, for our residents? We need to take care of them. Too many of them are leaving. And, and Carol, what's your background in terms of uh, why you feel you're qualified for this? For the last three years, I have been involved in a lot of different entities, a lot of different organizations that deal mostly with cultural preservation, the protection and perpetuation of our culture, our ibikupuna, especially my passion. My passion lies with our ibikupuna, the desecration of their burial sites, their resting places, coming about through development, overdevelopment. And it's not for our locals here. It's for the offshore investments, as I mentioned earlier. You have homes in Wailea that are going for three to $5 million. Can a local resident afford that? Not no. Now, mm -hmm. more than not no. That's why. Thank you, Carol. Uh, our next questions will come from Asia Iyer. Asia? Aloha, Carol Lee. Aloha, no. So you have so much experience. I've, I've kind of watched your um, participation in local groups and organizations. And uh, it just seems like everywhere something good is happening, you're there uh, at the front lines. But I'm curious, uh, you know, being a county council member is quite different than the things that you've been involved in in, in uh, Maui County in the past. But what do you, so what do you think has prepared you the most for being a council member uh, of the things that you've been involved with? I believe it all started with my home life the discipline that I got from my mom, which moved into my um, leadership and integrity that I had received through my 22 years of military service. So I think the leadership and the integrity and the discipline is what makes me a good candidate to be in office. There is an organization that I have been involved in for the past 16 years. And it's a World Benevolent Society for Native Hawaiian Women. I am going now on my seventh term as Pelikikena. So I believe that all of that makes me a choice for Maui County Council. Mahalo for the question. I just kind of a follow up question too. Um, do you see yourself? Uh, being more of the council member who's pushing for more new ordinances and bills? Uh, do you see yourself leading, um, like, how do you see yourself functioning in the county council, I guess? Do you do you have ordinances and bills that you're looking forward to uh, submitting when you're in there? Do you look forward to running your own, um, you know, the your own group? Like, what, what do you kind of see yourself as far as the minutia, the day-to-day, -day, kind of the nitty-gritty of, of the council? As far as making new ordinances, regulations, I would say we need to definitely bifurcate Department of Housing and Human Concerns. 
We need to do more for our houseless. And that's where I say we need to bring about more ordinances to allow them access to the wraparound services that supposedly they have a connection to or are able to access. But if they don't have a phone, if they don't have an address, how can they access those services? So those are the places in which I look to creating ordinances to help our houseless. Thank you for that. I'll turn it over to the next uh, interviewer. Bruce, uh, your next, uh, Bruce Douglas is our next. Uh... Hi, Carol. Um, what I'd like to check with you about is you have done a whole lot of work with the homeless, the houseless, the rentless population, uh, and with uh, affordable housing. Uh, and I know that's been a lot of your focus and your work. So if you become in the council, how would you actually tackle and solve those problems? So you are correct, Bruce. In the last election, I pushed for having supplies, materials that can be manufactured and distributed locally, i.e. looking at possibly hemp, um, bamboo, building materials that we can grow here, manufacture here, distribute here, not have to rely 100% on import. That to me would cut down the cost of housing. It would hopefully allow our locals to stay here, stay home, and not necessarily have to be in a generational household in order to afford to live here. With regards to the houseless situation, because of what happened at Amala Place last September, we, this hui that I belong to, have been advocating for managed encampments. Managed encampment in my situation or in my thought and my idea would be to have either private entities and the county work together provide the land and the infrastructure. This hui that I belong to, we've traveled to Oahu. We have visited Auntie Twink and the Pu'uhonua O'Waianai to see how she has done her houselessness, how she's combated that issue. We've also gone to see the um, housing development in Kalailoa that was done for the veterans. How did that come about? What is the qualifications that are, you know, asked of in order to, to be on the list, so to say, be part of the lottery? So both of those issues that I've worked with, with within the last four years, um, I believe that those are some of the things that can be done, especially for our house is the managed encampment. Thank you. And, uh dovetail on the previous question uh part of the expense is not only the cost of building a house here but also the cost of uh uh the land and keeping the affordable houses into perpetuity where they don't become someone gets in cheap and they're able to sell it later how would you solve those two issues the land price and the in perpetuity so land prices if we work with the land trusts we can possibly be able to um, keep the land in perpetuity at a lower cost. Also, um, in the housing part of that, and I'm going to speak more on the houseless part, is you don't necessarily have to build something with four walls. Why can't you utilize um, yurts, Conestoga huts, um, trailer, uh, what, do you, what do they call those? Containers. You know, there's a lot of different options there rather than just the conventional brick house, right? So that to me um, would help to bring down not only the cost of the land, but also the cost of the housing for whomever it will be moving in. 
I hope that answered your question. That's pretty good. That's good information. Thank you. I will pass it on now to uh, Anne. Hi, Anne. I, I, I want to talk about the water rights. I know it's a continuing contentious issue. And now we have Mahi Pono. And before it was just like Alexander and Baldwin. And um, they are, keep getting these, ex, these leases extended, water leases. And um, I just want to know where you stand on that. And, and would you do you think that the county should uh, assert eminent don domain in, in order to um, administer the public trust water maintain public trust water resources? How so just highlighting a little of what you said, and water is a public trust, but right. in the Kanavai, Kuliana owners, Kuliana land owners are at most number one. Their right cannot be taken away as far as water comes, okay? With what is happening on Maui, it is because, in my opinion, the Maui Planning Commission is approving too many developments without requiring what was put in back during the time frame of Michelle Anderson. Show me the water. Yeah. Development needs to bring that back. They need to determine what the water source is and the treatment of wastewater. So for me, water is number one for Kanaka and local residents here, not for offshore investments and not for third, fourth, fifth, and umpteen million homes. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Particularly since we have an ongoing drought and there's so much water being wasted, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> In the current system. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your thank answer. You. Next question will be from Alan Lloyd. Hi, Alan. Hi, Carol Lee. Aloha. Um, so, uh, uh, my first question is, what do you think the minimum wage should be in 2022? Hmm. If you're talking about Maui with homes at 1.16 right now, <laughs> at least maybe $100 an hour. <laughs> Seriously. I mean... For anybody working McDonald's or any of those types of entities, you're only getting, what, $12, $13 an hour? Ten, For ten. our teachers and first responders, how much are they getting? Maybe 100000 maybe six figures, but then they have to have two incomes and they have to have two jobs in order to provide for a house here on Maui. Minimum wage, we should at least start at $25. Because it's a livable start? wage for me. To me, it's livable wage. Yeah, you have to be compar comparable to what the economy is, comparable to the prices that we have to pay for everything here because it, we depend too much on import. When do you think $25 an hour should start? Yesterday. Yesterday, okay. And... Um, I have one more question. How would you fund um, housing for the unhoused and the unhomed? Uh, so how would you fund an affordable housing plan that makes it affordable for um, people who have lived here all their lives and their ancestors have lived here, as well as for people who don't have any kind of housing or home? So I think the best way to start off is because many of our locals can't afford to buy outright, they don't have the money for the closing costs of the down payment. Let's work on rent to own or rent to lease. Yeah, own to lease, lease to own. What is it? Right. Lease to own, sorry. Lease to own. <laughs> rent to own and lease to own. Right. Why can't we start off with that? Okay, whatever monies that they put in to whatever dwelling they are living in, Make it work for them. That's where I think it needs to start. And then offer a lot more first-time homebuyer grants and loans 
and partnerships. Yeah, you have nonprofits out there that are doing an awesome job in building affordable housing. Let's get more of them involved. And uh, one more, how would you increase, so I assume that would come from the affordable housing fund the county has how would you increase the affordable housing fund? I think this session, the current um, affordable housing chair has done a really good job in building up that affordable housing fund. Um, I would like to probably tap more into um, taxes that aren't applicable to us as, as locals, i.e. tourist tax. You know, tax those that are coming here for the fun and the game of it all at our expense. Um, we need to do like an infrastructure tax. We need to do like um, visitor parks. I know visitor parks is going to be hard because a lot of it is state and county owned, but county owned, why not? You know, do something that's going to tax the people that come here. Also, I think and, and I know there's going to be a pushback on this because there's not enough staffing, the staffing shortage. You need to have all these vendors that provide activities for tourists monitored. Because I believe many of them are not permitted. Many of them have taken space that once was for locals but just aren't being, there's no oversight, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mahalo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, our next uh, questions will come from Mark Joyner. Uh, <laughs> Aloha, Hi, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, Carolee. Um, just uh, wanted to ask, uh, uh, a question that uh, is often asked actually of, of potential candidates, but I think in your particular case, I'd be very interested in the answer. And that is, um, what is something that the public doesn't know about your background that would contribute you uh, to you being an outstanding council member? Something that the public does not know about me? Exactly. Me. They don't know me. Once you get to know who I am by discussion, hey, hello, hey, hello, face to face, you'll have a better idea of who I am. Hearsay from other people and what they know of me is not me. Yeah. So I believe if anybody wants to know who I am, I'm open. Drop me a line, send me an email, whatever you need to do, because I'm there. I'm ready to talk to people. Yeah, that's certainly been clear to me over the last two sessions. <laughs> um, th the other question I had, if there's, if there's a, you've spoken a lot about the houseless, about the housing situation, uh, even about water. I'm just wondering if there's a particular issue that you would like to sort of de define your candidacy. You know, Mark, I think that's a hard one to pinpoint only because the issues that are affecting us all intertwine within each other. We can't get an affordable home because we don't have livable wages. We can't afford to live because we can't afford basic necessities. And I can't just say only one. It's all of them together. So collectively, should I be the next county council member for Kahului? I will work hard with my comrades and my colleagues to ensure that all of these issues get addressed. Not just one, but all. Wonderful. Mahalo, Carolee. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Carol, uh, I have another question for you, and that is to do with the Charter Commission. Uh, we have been working this past year uh, diligently, and right now there are 11 charter 
amendments that are up for the 2022 ballot. I'm just wondering if there's any of these that you oppose or any that you support uh, very strongly. You already mentioned the bifurcation of the housing department and human concerns. Uh, would you want to elaborate on that or are there other charter amendments that you feel strongly about? I think the biggest one, like I said, is the bifurcation, because with the bifurcation, we will be able to get directors in there that have the expertise on both issues, not one or the other, but both. And the services will be able to be provided according to the department itself. So you don't have a social worker in there that's in charge or the director of housing and human concerns when they only know about human concerns, but they know nothing about housing and vice versa. So for me, that is the most important issue is the bifurcation. Thank you, Carol. Uh, we'll have another question from Asia Iyer. Asia? Hi, you're doing such a great job answering these questions. Um, I have <laughs> this something that's been near and dear to my heart and uh, part of my previous candidacy is just addressing uh, small business needs here through the county. A lot of times we uh, account the businesses here are overregulated. Uh, they feel like it's hard for local people to run local small businesses here and that they often get pushed out by the larger offshore corporations. Do you have any ideas or things that you've um, considered or watched in the past that you feel like would better assist local people with uh, being able to run their own businesses here? I think if we can get county to do some kind of, of partnership with our nonprofits to provide areas um, where our small business where our small businesses can have their businesses at a low cost rent. That is the biggest issue, I believe, for other than our agriculture industry. So anybody that has like a store, a restaurant, or you know anything that needs a um, building, okay, we need to provide some kind of assistance to them with the rent or the lease, because I think that's what's killing them the most is the overhead. After the overhead comes all the benefits that they have to provide for their employees. For the agricultural side, I would say do exactly what Maui Hub is doing, Maui Food Hub. Gather all our farmers together, open more farmers markets, around the islands, provide more local food truck places where our local vendors can go. They can sell, you know, whatever they have at the markets. We can have food trucks. I think right now that big push on food trucks is really doing good for a lot of our, our local businesses. You know, it's taken away the overhead that restaurants have had, that stores have had, and so a lot of our um, small businesses that have had restaurants that have had to close because of the pandemic, they've opted to go into food trucks and it's really helped them flourish. So I hope that's for you. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And kind of going back to something you brought up in one of the first questions too, is just how many vacant buildings we have. And I think that your answer to that really um, you know, that it's a problem. We have a lot of empty commercial and industrial zoned areas. And, uh, you know, just it, it's kind of shocking that things are so it's so expensive for local businesses to uh, get leases here. It's so expensive for local people to get into homes. And yet we have all this vacancy. So I think that's that's where those two come together. Um, <laughs> and sorry, I'm, I'm kind of going out here on these questions, but it, it this question came to mind and, and Really, I think it's something that the council hasn't fully addressed, but how do you feel about property taxes here? I, you're a local resident and a local home, and yet you're paying higher taxes potentially than a lot of the offshore corporations that, that are here. Have you looked into the property tax uh, 
inequalities here on the island and, and thought about how the council could address those? Honestly, I've not done a deep dive into property taxes as of yet. Um, I know uh, Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez has looked into it as far as trying to um, tax the offshore investments at a higher rate. Um, and then also trying to protect our Juliana landowners or generational landowners um, in providing the lower taxes, even with um, high-priced mansions that surround them. So I know that's been looked at. Again, I haven't really done a deep dive into that as of yet, but should I get in? Yes, I will, because it affects all of us. Definitely. And I hope I hope you get that chance to really look into it. It's, it maybe would bring all those things together, the vacant, the vacant, um, unaffordable <laughs> places. You know, that and, just might be, you it. know, you might just have tapped into it with all these empty buildings. Um, look at Kahumanu Center, look at Maui Mall, look at Maui Marketplace and look at the old um, Kahului Shopping Center. OK. All those entities are all owned by offshore investments. A lot of those places have a lot of empty buildings. So how much are they paying? Is there an incentive that can be put on them that after a certain amount of time as unoccupied space? Guess what? You should be charging more right. for rent. So if right. you have a building that's been vacant, say, six months, Okay, six months will give you. But after six months, guess what? Maybe raise that rent, raise that property tax by a certain increment, percentage increment. Right. Yeah, until yeah, I you think get I, it occupied. It becomes like a use. So the property tax becomes based on use. And so that we're not, I, right. So if it's not in use, then that's something. Or if it's used as a vacation rental, it's taxed differently if it's used as a residential home. Right. Yeah. You know, this, this could be a way to maybe bring together some of these points. Anyway, I appreciate your answer to these questions. I'll, I'll turn over the next question and answer so that I take all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Carol, um, diversified economy. There's been a lot of talk about creating a diversified economy for Maui because we're so reliant on tourism. If um, you got in, excuse that phone. How would you create, uh, encourage a diversified economy beyond the tourism or service to wealthy people? I think one way, and this is pushed a lot in the school system, is the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Why can't we touch into that technology part? We have a technology part here in Kihei, but why can't we expound on that? Why can't we bring more modern technology? Bring Maui up to par. Maui's still back in the 50s. Bring it up to the 21st and 22nd centuries, I say. Yeah. Modernize our technology. And I think it in doing that, um, we could probably bring in a lot more high-tech jobs that would provide that livable wage that would allow our residents to stay here. And on that same question, how would you encourage more farmers to take part in growing agriculture? And since we have a 12 month growing season here, how would you encourage more farmers to be able to have access to land and what they need to create more farmers? If I think if the county looks at all the open land that they have in their inventory, provide some of that ag land in a partnership, work with the farmers to do co-ops. I think that would help our farmers um, if there was land that was given to them that they would be able to grow whatever they could and a percentage of that would be utilized as payback for whatever their property tax would be or, you know, the, the um, usage of the land. Okay. 
Thank you. And uh, with that, pass it on to uh, Anne. Okay. Aloha again. Um, so Hello. I know that most of us, at least personally, are affected by this phenomena of, uh, you know, this over-tourism, and we noticed that post-pandemic and all these tourists coming here and actually exceeding what the Maui Island plan guidelines were. And now we're saying that it's gotten even more tourist influx than pre-pandemic mm -hmm. times. What do you think like is the, the best solution for that in addressing this, this problem? I know it's, it's the infrastructure is diff. <laughs> we don't have the infrastructure to accommodate all these tourists, nor do we have the, the parking lots or the restaurants or the uh, rentals or, you know, a lot of these rentals are going to short-term rentals rather than long-term rentals, which is what we need. So what, what do you think is the solution or one of the best effective solutions for that to address over-tourism? I think number one, stop marketing Maui. We don't need to market the islands. They sell themselves. We have beautiful weather. We have beautiful beaches. We have a lot of open land. That's what people come to see. And of course, the aloha that is here. So if you stop marketing Maui, start concentrating on other issues that are more important. To me, I think that would take care of the tourism. But with those tourists, you need to educate them. Our culture here is so much different than what you find in Mokohonu, in the continent, in the 48 contiguous. So they need to know that we are on an island. Resources are minimal. Right. Treat them with respect. And that way, they will malama, and they will take pride when they come to visit. I appreciate that answer. I agree. <laughs> hey, let's go to the, our next one then. Uh, Alan? All right. Uh, aloha again, Carolee. I have two questions. Um, one is, how would you um, provide more Wi-Fi access to people who live in uh, rural areas of the island? That's my first question. Because there's a hmm. lack of Wi-Fi access for many people. <laughs> but, you know, it's not only rural areas. <laughs> I've right. even having a hard time here in central Maui. Hallelujah. Internet is so sporadic. Um, I think... The hardest part is not having enough choice. We only have spectrum. Sorry, I don't know if I should mention it by name, but anyways, we don't have very many options as far as um, communication wise. I know like Department of Hawaiian Homelands requires only one communication um, company to provide internet service, regardless of where that um, Hawaiian Homeland Homestead is and that company is not providing a good enough service for our beneficiaries. So I think having more options in that regard for our homesteaders um, to pick rather than be um, saying you have to stay with this company no ifs, ands, or buts um, would help them to provide more access to better um, internet and broadband. Okay, sorry. It's okay. So I know in other, in other um, areas, they've um, increased the broadband like in local libraries so people can literally sit outside of the library or inside the library and um, access Wi-Fi. Would you support... Uh, sorry, that's my second question. I have one after that. Would you support that? Having Wi-Fi outside of a building would make yeah, it more like a, accessible. like in a library. Mm -hmm. There's Wi-Fi in the libraries. Mm -hmm. And so would it 
would I agree with having Wi-Fi available outside of the library? Say if they had like a, a central courtyard type thing or yeah. within a certain radius of the library. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. That would be my question. So currently in the situation of our houseless, I would say going outside the perimeter of the physical building would allow our houseless access. So I would agree with having that. How about residents like they live in Hana? Residents in rural areas may have some, um, some homes may have better access than other homes. So I think if, if they're okay with it, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with, you know, whatever is accessible for our people. Okay. And then my last question is, uh, it seems like Maui residents pay the highest electric rates uh, if in the state, if not the nation. Um, and electricity is provided by a private corporation. And Kauai pays the lowest rates in the nation uh, with an electric utility provided by a community cooperative. What are your thoughts about supporting uh, changing our electric distribution system from a private corporation to a publicly owned and operated co-op? 100%. 100%. Okay. As what's being done on Kauai. Because there was a recent article, if I remember correctly, in Civil Bee that says, hey, be prepared. We might be paying 20% more on electricity. Right. Great. Right. Mahalo. Thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you, Alan. Uh, our next interviewer will be Mark Joyner again. Okay, there we go. Um, Carolee, do you think the current council uh, is effective? And if yet, yes, why do you think that? And if no, uh, what do you think needs improvement? Uh, and what specifically would you do? Um, how would you accomplish your goal? that have helped our residents, not only for property taxes, um, for grants, you know, having access to- Carolee, you went on mute. Whatever, we lost your voice. Can you hear me now? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Sorry, I lost my train of thought, but- um. The question was, has this council done good? Yes, it has. And and what, if anything, would you do to, to uh, uh, build on that or change things at the council? I would like to see more um, talk story and more collaboration amongst the council to provide for our local residents rather than the offshore investors. And I think a lot of it, again, for me, goes back to our um, the way our boards and commissions are chosen. Um, I don't believe that the county council has access to qualified people that submit because the list that they get is handpicked by a certain individual. So they don't get access to all qualified personnel. So I think if we were to fix that process, it might be better for us. And we might be able to even streamline process in a lot of um, different ways, i.e. permitting. Um, for developers. Um, I think that's what I can answer for now. Okay. Sorry, Mark. Oh, uh, no worries. Thanks very much, Carol. Yeah. Uh, Carol, I have I have one more question for you. Um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about uh, right now the county council and your perspective of that. 
Uh, I've also uh, been on a lot of county council calls uh, and I've seen you testify in a lot of different ways during county council meetings. And this is a, a team effort. Uh, the county council really forms a, a collaborative team where they can work on issues together. What have you done in terms of your interfacing with the county council, you know, like testimonies and uh, like you're actually working with or participating with different county council members? Our county council members um, have kuleana with regards to the committees that they belong to, that they chair. On the flip side, those that they are members of, committees I'm talking about, that they're members, members of, they're able to push their agendas, items and issues that they're passionate about, and just... Um, Last year, I had the opportunity to work with council member Shane Sinensi on the water use and development plan and getting more of our local Kanaka voice to come to the table. Getting, reaching out to our Ahamokus and representatives of each of the Ahupua'as and the mokus of our, of our island, bringing them to the table and addressing the issue that our locals run across, that their issues seem to get silenced by big corporations. So in that I've learned and I've been able to experience a little bit of behind the scenes of how council works and how our government works. And I have a better insight now. And so moving forward, I would like to build upon that and be able to, should I get in, work to make things better for our locals here, utilizing what I've already learned. Thank you, Carol Lee, appreciate that. Uh, are there any other questions uh, that any of our interviewers have at this time before we end? Then if not, Carol Lee, thank you so much for taking the time and also thank you for running for office. It takes a, a huge commitment to do that and really putting yourself out there in the community in a, in a real significant way. So thank you for doing this and for reaching out and really su supporting the, the Kahului office, uh, which again, uh, having <clears throat> members together in the county council that work together collaboratively is so important. And I've seen you, Carol, work with other county council members also. So I really feel that that teamwork will really be there. Um, so I, I wish you luck in this election. and. I would uh, invite all of those listening to tune in to our other interviews. We'll be posting these on mauipononetwork.org and also they'll be available on Akaku TV. So thank you for tuning in and please listen to other interviews. Become an informed voter. It's very important for this 2022 election that you get informed votes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Mahalo, Paul. Mahalo, Maui Puna Network, for allowing me this opportunity to come and speak before you, provide you with a little insight of who I am. Yes, Mark, getting to know a little bit about me. I am Carol Lee Kamipuna, and I'm running for Maui County Council's Kahului seat. I would appreciate your vote. Have a good day. God bless. Aloha. <laughs>